morning, folks. What's going on? I'm coming to you from my hotel room here in Bangkok. Uh, I, I'm here for business for a couple of days and uh, heading out to the IDS in Germany. And I, just a question came up on Instagram on how can we get better quality CBCT images from an acquisition point of view as well as from just the data and uh, kind of a settings, if you will. So just make it very quick. You know, the key components of taking a good quality CBCT image has to do with the image acquisition. And then the rest of it, which is the image processing, is a function of your uh, machine that you have. I have the Morita X800 and if anybody else has some other ones. Many of the other things out there are pretty good too, but the image processing is an com important component of the software that is dependent on whichever system you have. And then last a piece of the triad is the image uh, interpretation, which is basically what's in here. So that's going to be your ability to understand from the basic anatomical uh, features of the area you're taking an image and your understanding of the basis and principles of pathology and normal tissues, how you can interpret a pathology or a cause of a problem. So besides that, the only thing we can really control over is the acquisition. And the acquisition is the part that if you're taking the image yourself, most of us are having the um, our assistants or auxiliary personnel taking the images. So it's important for them to be excellent at communicating with the patients, the importance that the patient's role has in terms of being still during the time that it takes to acquire the image so that they can get the most amount of um, and sharpness. So sharpness is a function of movement. And as you know from photography, when it gets to nighttime, you're going to end up getting more blurry images because the shutter speed goes down. As a result, any kind of movement creates more of a blur. And that's a killer for our images in radiography. You need to have patience, therefore, that are still and not moving. So breathing even can cause a problem. So it's important for them to really have this understanding of how, why it's important for them to be still during the course of the image. If a patient is a little shaky, older, patients make sure that they sit down so that they are less uh, prone to movement if they're standing up they should really hold on to something and then you have to let them know how long does it take was it you know uh, 20 30 40 uh, depending on the machine you have and whether you're taking a 180 or 360 degree image it's going to take a different length of time for that rotating head to rotate around the patient's head and during that whole time the patient has to be still they need to know that ahead of time at what point they should maybe breathe out slowly instead of holding their breath so that they are not moving uh, as much also the proper uh, posture is also very important so that their shoulders are back and their head is up and extended this way the shoulders are out of the way because as that arm is rotating around sometimes it could graze against their uh, shoulder and that makes them move a little bit and that little tiny jerky motion will create a blurry image anytime you take an image and you see a double um, line on your ramus of the mandible or anywhere else that means that the image you acquired is not really good. In endo, especially because of the fact that you want to have the most resolution for the best sharpness for uh, your um, you know, distinction of additional canals and so on, that's why you really want to have a patient that is completely still during the acquisition component. Now, in terms of the settings, you want to increase the energy uh, of the x-ray. So maxing your K, you know, KVP and your amperage will always help improve the quality of the image. Uh, some people have a problem with, oh, well, you're going to increase the amount of microceivers that you're going to induce to the patient. And it's true, you're going to increase it a little bit. But let's face it, if you're going to get an image, you might as well have the best quality image. And at the rates of of the um, uh, radiation that we're talking about to acquire CBCT image, it is being so low that having a little bit of a higher one to get a better quality image is well worth it rather than try to be a little bit below. It's kind of like giving antibiotics. If you are afraid of antibiotics and then you give it a much lower dose, you're actually going to cause other kinds of problems for the patient. So you at least have to give a proper dose so you can get the best quality image. And uh, that's basically my main uh, takes make sure you have a patient that is fully still but having increased and better communication with them in terms of what they need to do and what to expect during the acquisition components and then try to increase the amount of energy and that you are giving to the patient so that they can get the best uh, image as well as having a good quality machine that can have that has great image processing and uh, can reduce the amount of uh, noise and beam hardening and scatter that is present because of the fact that many of the restorations that are in the mouth are going to create a scatter in the x-ray and cause problems with the uh, noise and image uh, noise in the image so that's it guys i hope this was helpful and uh, see you in the next video